a Mac stock report, and Apple's gaming money machine. This is Mac Voices. Mac Voices is supported by Collide. Get important, timely, and relevant security recommendations for your Mac right inside Slack. Try all of Collide's features on an unlimited number of devices free for 14 days, no credit card required, at collide.com slash macvoices. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, it won't surprise you at all that this is Mac Voices Live. It's Tuesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, whatever time that is, wherever you are. We are at youtube.com slash TV, where we have been joined by some of our friends in the chat, and we are hoping for more um, as the evening goes on. In fact, we might even see some other people join the panel as the evening goes on. We shall see. A number of different things I want to talk about tonight, and I'm anxious to talk about them with this particular panel. Um, but let's hey, go Chuck. around the table first. Yes. Oh, well, we're trying to have the introductions, but I was wondering if we could have any kind of a max stock recap at all. I think we can get to that. I think we can get to that. So I'll go around the let everybody know who's here, and then we'll, uh, we'll hit max stock. Um, join us for the first time in a little while, and I'm taking my screen as I always do. Uh, Mr. Jeff Butts is here from the Mac Observer. Jeff, great yes, to sir. have you. Oh, thank you. Good to be here. Um, it's been a while. I, I moved, reconfigured, and now I'm trying to get into a uh, a routine again. Is that a Mandalorian on your chest, or are you just glad to see me? Uh, both, both. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is a way. And, and the child. Ah, okay. Okay. Thought I recognized it. Yep. And um, by the way, this is coming to you courtesy of Continuity Camera. Oh, okay, good. I'm, I'm actually using, I've got Ventura and iOS 16 installed, and so I've been testing out Continuity Camera. Oh, good, so I, we're... I think not the first time on this on this show, right? Didn't Warren? Didn't you do it? Um, oh yeah, I did it the first. Yeah, I did it unintentionally the first day it came out. Yeah, and, no, that's what and I, I still wants. It still wants to connect to it, even though I don't want it. The, <laughs> The, the the problem with just real fast the problem with the 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 idea of continuity camera and camo and whatever you guys use is you can't use your phone while it, you know it sometimes you want to use your phone while you're using your phone as a camera but right anyhow uh, well i've, I've yeah. got enough other devices i can resist the urge to try to grab the phone off the tripod that's true <laughs> Also joining us, Mr. David Ginsberg. David, good to have you as always. Good to be here as well. And I have a second iPhone, so I don't have to worry about that. That's my iPhone. So, <laughs> uh, no, great okay. to see you. We missed just dearly at what Mac stock, and hope, well, I'm glad to hear we'll be able to do a little bit of a recap. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to hearing about it. Um, also, uh, another Mac stock attendee, Mr. Warren Sklar, or at least for part of the weekend, anyway. Warren, good to have you. Yeah, it was a surprise to me to be here. You said, you know, it should be no surprise that we're here again, and and I'm surprised. Here I am. Um, <laughs> uh, good to be here. Uh, Max Stock was good. Um, we could talk about that. Uh, and um, yeah, it, it's. Uh, I got back yesterday, so I'm getting back into the swing. Good. Mr. Jeff Gammon has joined us once again with his uh, sexy blue background. Jeff, good to have you. <laughs> It's a blue light special right there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you have to be of a certain age to uh to get Warren's joke. And I'm pretty sure we all get it. Um yeah. Chuck, as always, uh, it's it, it's great to be here. And uh um I I'm so happy to see you. you even though we both missed Max Stock. Yeah, unfortunately. But you know, there's certain certain realities. You know, it's it's tough to be grown up and responsible, right? Yeah, that's totally lame. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Also joining us, last but absolutely not least, Indiana Jones. Or excuse me, Jim Ray. Um, <laughs> Jim, Indiana, how are you? What's going and, on? And not an example of being responsible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have a new look tonight. I, I like it. I like it, too. I'm jealous. Uh, okay. You should be. Okay. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> oh man, it's going to be one of those nights, folks. I can just tell. You say that well, pretty much every show. Yeah, I do. I know. Yeah. I know. It's it just it just happens that way sometimes. Um, so we had a request for a Mac stock recap. Let's do it. Um, but unfortunately, it means that David and Warren are the only two that can really give us a recap because they were the only two there. So, David, since you're in the top of my screen, I'll let you start off. Um, recap yeah, Mac stock for us. Yeah, we had we had we had a great time. A, lot, um, a good, a fair, uh, fair crowd um, made it uh, for the Saturday event. Uh, there was uh, just a remember off the top of my head all the things that were talked about. Though Mike Mike Rose, of course, filled in for you. Uh, did a great presentation. Um, uh, and uh, man, again, I can't remember all the stuff. It's been so it it, it did so much. Uh, uh, th- there was uh, Aaron. I forgot her name, last name. She she did the, the music composition. I think that was, that was pretty well received. Uh, we had that. And then uh, uh, so we had, uh, there were three speakers. Uh, it was kind of filling. That's why it's hard for me to remember everything because it, it all changed to, to the last minute. Uh, uh, but uh, Saturday was a, was a really good event. A lot, a lot of uh, good interaction with everybody. Uh, and then uh, Sunday, uh, Mike Schmidt uh, d- uh, did his, his thing. And then I did my thing with uh, consuming media. Got it really well received. I was I was really uh, pleased to get some um, good feedback from some of the audience members coming up to me and uh, saying how they really enjoyed it. And uh, uh, and I went through some uh, detail with uh, uh, not only uh, all, all three it was uh, vi- it was video uh, uh, video streaming podcasts and music. Um, I went uh, into the deeper dive. Um, Mike did a lot of his stuff and he combined his, his stuff. Uh, and, uh, we also did an after stock where, um, uh, Brett Terpstra took up, us up on stage. And I, of course I forgot to mention JM, J Miller. He was there, uh, as the dev advocate for uh, Microsoft and did a really good presentation as well, uh, on, um, on Saturday. So nice. it was, it was, a it was, a it was definitely, uh, a, a great time had by all and the, the crowd was a uh, surprisingly a, a, a good thing. This is the uh, this is this year's uh, shirt here, so I'm, I'm wearing right now. So I, think, I believe there's going to be one in the mail for you pretty soon here, Chuck. So uh, and um, uh, but the, I, I had a lot of positive feedback. Guys, Harold did a pretty really good job. Uh, he was the the video uh, coordinator there at the back of the room, so he kept uh, he kept things going uh, while we were recording things and. Uh, um, no, a lot, a lot of good, a lot of good folks there. It was, it was fun to see everybody and, and definitely everybody was asking about you. They were missing you, missing you dearly, but, uh, we kind of made do the same, same people were missing Kelly. Kelly was supposed to be there as well. She had a family emergency, so she couldn't make it either. And, uh, so we, we made the best of it. You know, we also had, uh, we also had some, uh, audience members come up and did about a 10 minute segment on, um, on a different topic. And a couple of really good topics, uh, which was a lot of fun. We kind of did that as a filler, uh, not cool. necessarily filler, but it was it was a, it just more of another piece so we can uh, put some time in because we only had two of us speaking on Sunday. So, uh, so but, but but we were able to make the best of it, and uh, I think everybody really enjoyed it. And uh, I think Mike was very pleased and good to see everybody and I got to hang out. The networking is always a lot of fun. Um, they did and Mike did uh, like he promised he kept everything safe and everybody was wearing wearing masks during the during the event which i i was very happy to, to say i was to see that because uh, uh you don't know you don't know there was there's was, there was one uh one attendee who had just got back from leo laporte's uh, uh cruise <laughs> and I, and i just was watching him earlier and he said he got covid what a surprise on a cruise oh, no. mm. uh, wow. uh so I just hope to God I didn't get it from this guy. I mean, it's actually one of, <laughs> one of my app, Mac, Apple user group uh, friends. So, but I was wearing a mask the whole time. So, but uh, but he, he literally just got back like the night before. Um, so that was that's that that's dedication for Mac stock and that just shows you right there. A lot of people oh. are, were really. Thanks for uh, telling me, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for telling you. You didn't. I don't think you even spoke to him. I just found out about this this morning. So or, I know, but I was I, I was there when you spoke to him, so I was right there. I, I remember him talking to you at the end. Yeah, but so, we were married masks, so I, I think we were okay. I, I, yeah, yeah. Just if I get COVID, I'll I'll know how it happened, and that's fine. <laughs> yeah, I don't um, know. So, but, so hey. yeah. Anyways, but, but, but Warren was yeah. Warren can give you some some uh, additional. I'll feedback. be real fast about it, but yeah, Chuck, we missed you. Uh, definitely. Thank you. Um, it was for me. It was great to just you know, see humans instead of uh, icons on my screen uh, for the past three years, Dave, almost. Yeah. 
yeah. three so years since the last Dave, Dave and I talk more than to each other than you know I talked to family members for the last three years and I never saw him. So, <laughs> so that was that was good to see him. Um that guy was he was good. He didn't he only fell asleep once or twice back there, uh, you know, working uh, recording I was, things. I wasn't gonna say that you I let you do it. <laughs> I'm kidding. I don't he didn't fall asleep. I didn't oh, see he him. was doing great. At You're the normal. end of at the end of this, he said he was tired, but he made it. He was a he was a fighter. Um Jay, I spoke to Jay and uh, met a lot of nice people and uh you know Dave um you know kind of made me known of who I was. We had name tags and some people said they my name looks familiar, my face looks familiar, but they couldn't really place where I am, which is good because I, you know, it's better for me. Yeah, um, question. Yeah. Well, I had to yeah, yeah, who he was. And, Wait, they don't all watch Matt Voices? Um, they probably do, but I'm sure nobody even notices who I am or even cares. So, um, and, you know, oh. they're all looking at Chuck and Jeff and Dave and all that. But, um, and, and the last, you know, I'll say that Dave's presentation probably was the most interactive. And, and I think people were, you know, his topic was definitely what a lot of people want to talk about, the streaming services, because, you know, everybody has an opinion and, yeah. you know, especially that kind of audience. He had a good mix, but there's definitely older, uh, some older people in the audience. And certainly they were confused about streaming and what to get. And they came up to Dave a lot afterwards and asked him certain questions, uh, you know, what he was talking about, because, you know, it's like we talked on the show, you know, it's, a, it's not an easy topic. There's just a hodgepodge of of everything out there from streaming services, and, and it's overwhelming if you don't know anything about it. So um, I think Dave helped a lot of people, which was really good to see. Yeah, yeah. It, was, awesome. it was a good topic. I'm glad I picked that topic, and it, mm-hmm. uh, it really turned out. I, I, I smell that I'm going to probably expand him on that topic in future shows, so... <laughs> Well, Brian in the chat room says he enjoyed seeing some of the Max Talk pictures on Twitter, and he's looking forward to watching the digital pass when published. Yeah, and that that's something I especially want to promote um, is that Mike uh, videotapes all the sessions, and of course, you know, it, it's a it's a volunteer effort here, folks. So it doesn't happen just overnight, but eventually those sessions will be released, and Mike um, offers a digital pass on the Max Talk website where you can go sign up. And then you can at least watch the videos of the presentations. Um, you know, if you couldn't be there, I know I will be doing exactly that. I'm, I'm chomping at the bit to, to get them out or, or see them, I should say, um, because I saw so many great comments about all the presentations. Yeah. Uh, and so I'm just, I, and in fact, I just realized that I guess when we did this last week, it was Tuesday before Max Talk, mm-hmm. um, and I tested positive uh, Wednesday morning. And so... That's why I didn't go to Max Stock. Um, you know, I, I I had no business on an airline based on their restrictions. I had no business at Max Stock because of Mike's uh, guidelines, and so I had to bow out at the very last minute, which I felt very bad for because uh, I didn't want to let him down. But I would have felt a hundred times worse if I had gone and anyone had gotten sick, and especially if they gotten really sick. Um, so. Sometimes it's not yeah. fun to be responsible, but you got to do it. Oh, let me say one last thing about the uh, digital pass. Uh, Dave put the link in there, but um, Mike really has quite the setup. Um, he has quite the setup for the uh, for the video portion mm-hmm. of what he does. Um, two really good looking HD cameras. They, they were new, great new cameras, and he has a um, multiple inputs so like you know he's recording the audience and inputting the device that's in there so it's really a professional you know if you're if you're considering doing it you should do it uh you sign up for the digital pass now how long will he keep the sign up uh available for the digital pass does anybody Probably know f- forever i told him that. oh yeah you can sign yeah. up anytime the old the old uh, last the past years are on uh, i don't know if chuck's going to put the link in, in the youtube chat but i just did uh, yeah, if I hadn't looked. I was paying attention here. Uh, but yeah, so the, the, in that link is uh, going to uh, there. All all the other uh, passes are in there as well. I uh, don't know oh, okay. if you necessarily want to look at the old stuff, but uh, you do have to subscribe to each one of them. Um, right. But uh, so, uh, but that's where it's going to be, and you just sign up. I, I don't. It won't be terribly expensive. Maybe eighty nine dollars, ninety nine dollars. Not sure what you what his price okay. is going to be um, on it. Yeah. But, uh, it's well <laughs> worth it. For it's going to be worth it. it. I mean, from what I saw, yeah. it, it's going to be uh, you know. Good yeah. quality and good speakers. So he does yeah. a very good job of doing the editing and and a lot of good yeah. stuff. I I tried to get 
someone from Mac Observer to to go up the Mac, to Mac stock, but it just couldn't happen this year. So <laughs> hopefully yeah. next year. Yeah. Well, that's that's my feeling too. Is I definitely want to you know want to go next year. So yeah. Um, for for the folks who are wa- not watching this live, um, I will make sure I have uh, the link. Um, in the show notes to uh, the digital pass for Mac stock. And I would encourage you definitely go and, and buy that and enjoy and benefit from the presentations by David and all everyone else we just talked about. Um, John, John, seen, F, John F. Braun's shirt alone is worth it. So Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> and, and Jeff knows very well what he was wearing too. <laughs> <laughs> it was. I don't even have to see the photos. Yeah. I, I, I know exactly it. what John was wearing. At, <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and I say that with love. It I've, was I've from, seen, he was going from Woodstock to Hawaii for sure. He was just. I've, I've <laughs> seen, yeah. yeah. I've I've been around John Braun enough that I, I don't even have to see the pictures. I can just imagine it without <laughs> ever seeing it. <laughs> He he wore it well, man. He looks good. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's yeah. normal for us, Morin. That was your first first taste of that. <laughs> now I know. <laughs> yep. Well, before we God. get today's Mac Voices is supported by Collide. Collide is an endpoint security solution that uses the most powerful untapped resource in IT: end users. Old school device management tools like MDMs force disruptive agents onto employee devices that slow performance and treat privacy as an afterthought. Collide does things differently. Instead of forcing changes on users, Collide notifies your team via Slack when their devices are insecure and gives them step-by-step instructions on how to solve the problem. By reaching out to employees via a friendly Slack message and educating them about company policies, Collide can help you build a culture in which everyone contributes to security because everyone understands how and why to do it. That makes for a stronger security now and a stronger security future. You can meet your compliance goals by putting users first. Visit collide.com slash macvoices to find out how. That's collide, K-O-L-I-D-E dot com slash macvoices. Thanks to Collide for supporting this edition of Mac Voices. Yeah, before we get started, I want to welcome Andrew Orr to the show. Andrew, good to have you. Thanks for showing up. Hey, I made it. Uh, I hope everyone is doing well. Yeah, everybody. I think everybody is good. All right. Yeah. Awesome. You know, just trying to trying to keep going. Um, yeah. I, I want to throw sort of a wild card in here because I'll, I'm not sure. If, honestly, it's it's terrible. I think it was last week, but I'm not sure um, that we talked about. Uh, and Jeff, I'm pointing to you. Um, because I believe you talked about playing games on your Apple TV, and we were having this discussion about some uh, games leaving um, Apple Arcade. And yes. so I'm throwing a link. Yeah, we into both. talked about that last week. I'm in touch with iOS. Yeah, so I'm throwing a link into both chat rooms, uh, our private one as well as the YouTube chat room. Now, I'm the first one to tell you this article is a little old. Okay, so it's not it's not current, but. I've I've heard about this on another podcast and went poking around, and I had no idea that Apple made more money on games in 2019 than Xbox, Sony, and Nintendo and Activision combined. So game gaming is a lot bigger deal for Apple than I think I realized. I always, maybe because of my own personal biases, I saw Apple Arcade as sort of a throwaway thing, but and and I realize not all that money is coming from Apple Arcade, but I mean most, that's a that's that's a pretty impressive statistic, even if it is a couple of years old. Most of it's not. It's that thirty percent. I mean that that's where they're getting their money. It's a thirty percent of all the games out there that's on iOS, which is. I mean that's still is, more power to them. Know, but yeah, that's what they're that's doing. even that's even more impressive. Yeah, yeah. you know, I mean, so that's like they're not even trying and. Yeah. Apple is successful in the gaming market in spite of themselves. <laughs> That's a good answer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, well, well, the top 1% of spenders spent $2,700 per year. People that's are a lot spending of twenty seven hundred dollars uh, Yeah, that's, yeah. A kid that, that's a kid who took mommy's phone and bought the Smurf berries. That's in-app purchases. Yeah. I don't know. I just, currency. 
I mean, I just felt like this deserved a little more attention from us because, you know, we've talked about Apple Arcade and, and, and I guess, I mean, there, I, I, I looked at Andrew and Jeff as probably the gamers, although some of the other, some of you other may, I don't, mm-hmm. but I mean, that just, and, and, you know, and I guess, is that all coming from the iPhone? I mean, because there I is no game console. A lot of it is. Uh, the, yeah. I mean, the iPhone is a very, very popular gaming platform. And while you're you're not going to be playing um, the, the same types of games that you play, say, on your Xbox or PlayStation, it's still a very popular platform. And it's a platform that's in your pocket all the time. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and it's pretty clear that people are really um, embracing the iPhone as a gaming platform. I would love to see the demographics on that. I got to imagine we're looking at 10 to 18 year olds buying most of the games or uh, add-ons, things like that. I'm thinking. Yeah. So we don't think most of that spending is on Apple TV games. Yeah, sure. <laughs> zero, 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 0.0001% of that, maybe. And, and they don't make any money really off the, I mean, on a Mac. I mean, nobody's really, uh, I don't think there's making that much money off the Mac App Store games, uh, to be honest with you, because I don't even know what, if they're in there. I'd, I'd be really and, you know, The interesting question, is Apple Arcade a good thing for them financially? I mean, you can't spend $2,700 a year on Apple Arcade. Right. People might be spending less money because of Apple Arcade and not more. But they I doubt want, it. They want to create a system that didn't ask you for more money while you were playing. And I think right. that was their purpose. People were getting, people were sending hate emails to Apple saying every time I play. Right. Game, I but that's probably where the you know bulk of that huge amount of money is coming from. I don't know. I know they, I mean, they just dropped a whole bunch because they didn't renew contracts. If they were doing, if both parties are doing so well, they would have renewed the contract. So a bunch just dropped off for some reason. Yeah, if, if losing fifteen games out of the total that's on Apple Arcade. That's not that big of a deal, and they have games rotating through on a regular basis. Right, but what? What I mean, if, why are they dropping? I guess if 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 everybody's making money off it, and what's different between a really popular game on Apple Arcade that people play every day versus so, a, versus a very non popular that somebody plays once here and there on Apple Arcade? They're both being paid the same by users, and I which is nothing. So I'm not sure mm-hmm. if Apple pays more money to. Let's say the the one that did the Simpson game that's on there, and I think there's a Sonic. So those studios are they paying a lot more money to be in Apple Arcade than a smaller game? I don't know. So that's something I've been hearing in the news too. Like there have been developers who are removing their games from Apple Arcade. What I was wondering is if this is like Apple themselves removing the games, like we're for whatever reason, or if it's maybe the the developers themselves, because I thought there was some kind of exclusivity where if you publish on Apple Arcade, you can't publish it on anywhere else for maybe a certain amount of time, something like that. Does that still apply after the the contract has ended, though? Contract with three years. That was definite. So that's why why it's all happening now, because Apple Arcade started three years ago today. But uh, so they're dropping off because they're not renewing or maybe, you know, maybe when they wrote in the contract initially, it was only, you know, for, you know, a three year contract. And they said, that's it. Where others had the ability to extend. Uh, Who knows? You you know, who knows what happened? But And um, the stories I read said. Most of these games will probably show up in the App Store shortly. They will, That's, but they might be uh, different, and they might cost money, or they might have ads and things like that. So they're gonna bring their game back in whatever iteration they want to, and it would course. make sense for it to, you know, try to make some money, you know, back and not just put it for free. So they they built up an audience of fans for those games. Now that the contract with Apple Arcade is up, they didn't renew it. Now it'll come back on the App Store and they'll start making more money off of it. 
And is that going to piss go. off? Is that going to piss off parents who let their kid play? You know, Johnny, you know, drive on Apple Arcade for three years, and now he has to pay for it. We'll see. It may. Well, you, it might, but you can't. You know, you you can't yeah, just what? go in the idea that I, I'm not going to do something and I'm not going to make money because I might upset some people. I mean, you know, if anything, it's like, okay, I got to try this game out for three years. And if I still want to play it after three years, then it may, it's probably worth the the investment to do so. Believe me, Warren, I can assure you that there are a lot of people out there that are upset that everything is not free. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And, but people get a lot more upset when things are free and then not. And that's when people get. Really I tested. don't know about, you know, people are just like, what? You want me to pay for your software? What right. Kind of are yeah, you? I mean, <laughs> what, why do you think piracy has been such a big deal since, you know, <laughs> the PCs were first invented? Yeah. Well, you know? and also think of what we're seeing. I mean, now there are several websites that run articles every month about what's coming to HBO Max and what's leaving and what's coming to Netflix and what's leaving. Yeah. And so this, this, this rotating in and out when you subscribe to something is, you know, just part of the landscape at this point, whether you yeah. like it or not. And I, I don't necessarily like it. The only thing I hope it never comes to is, is Apple music because that just feels like that, that, that started the whole subscription thing or was early. It already has. Yeah. There's music that's dropped off of that. But there's is something there? to, there's something to me different so, between a game. There's something different between a game and, a movie or music because a movie or maybe not music but at least a movie you're not sitting there playing over and over and over you know watching over and over and over and over again when it leaves it leaves when you're into a game that you really like that's you know when it goes that's more devastating than a movie going music paid attention to my face depends on the movie mm -hmm. <laughs> right yeah. okay you, you well. took the words out of my mouth jim okay I <laughs> I think, yeah, I think if you I've have watched, kids around, you probably have screen image burn in from uh, from the two or three movies the kids watch all day. Give every those day. kids some variety, man. Uh, There's more I've, Disney I've, stuff coming. I wasn't talking about kids. Warren, do you have kids? <laughs> yes. Um, more, I've I've watched Cars and Cars two at least a dozen <laughs> times this week alone. My, this my week kids, alone, my kids oh my didn't this week alone. Watching cars and cars and oh, wow! When when yeah. when a two year old wants to watch one particular show, that's what you watch. Hmm. And if you if don't, my want kids going to scream. Well, and, yeah, well, I mean, if the kids going to scream and cry, then I'm going to own a copy of Cars too somewhere. I guess, yeah, you know. Priorities. I, I have to, I have to say though, I I believe I will have more respect for the the demos. I mean. before before pandemic, right? Okay, that's, everything was before pandemic. But like at WWDC, when they bring out a game developer to show off and and you know demonstrate th these incredible games, and and what the hardware allowed them to do, it's like all right, that's nice. But you know that really doesn't apply to me. I will have a lot more respect for it when I see some of these numbers and what they mean to Apple, whether it's coming from Apple Arcade or just purchases. I just I, I admit I had no idea that that Apple was this deep into gaming. Well, of course, the other thing is that the gaming industry is way bigger than Hollywood. Well, that's true, too. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, tying into that, um, it, the exclusivity that, uh, that Apple had or has with games on uh, um, um, Game Center, uh, okay. Apple Arcade, wow. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure Apple made concessions for exclusivity because of how big that market is. And, and even Apple has to make concessions sometimes. I mean, exclusivity didn't mean or doesn't mean that the games are only available on Game Center. What it really means is they're not available on Android. Yeah. Brian in the chat says on Xbox, you have a heads up when a game is leaving Game Pass and can purchase it for 20% off before it leaves. Okay. That's good. So, well, but go, that's then. part of apparently what Microsoft arranged in their contracts. Right. So I guess Apple didn't do that. Right. Well, maybe, or maybe the, uh, the, the vendors didn't want to give 
twenty percent off just because they're leaving out of arcade. Maybe they want to either retool right, the game or just release it and you know get paid for it. You know, but it sounds like Microsoft negotiated. You know, if you're going to be on Game Pass, then you have to. You know, this is part of the deal. Um, but you know, it sounds like Apple just you know, okay, we're going to get this for three years and then it's yours again. And, you know, you can, you know, it's not guaranteed, but some of these games may just disappear, I suppose. Yeah, they yeah. might. It, you know, if they didn't develop a following on Apple Arcade and the developers don't see any any profit in bringing them out on the App Store, then, yeah, they'll just disappear. And I mean, you, would think, wait, says, you would think that would be the other way around, then. If they don't see any way to sell it and rather than disappear why wouldn't you just try to convince apple to send you that check every month well, maybe apple doesn't want to exactly right. well, so that's now, why, you know, that's the, fact, my point. the fact is yeah. apple didn't yeah. buy these apps right they they just brought the right to distribute them for three years and at the end of it you know all bets are off it's like you know somebody a baseball player plays for a team until their contract's over mm-hmm. and then you we mm-hmm. renegotiate from scratch and you know Maybe you go somewhere else, or maybe you stay at that same team. But you know, it doesn't really matter what happened before. Now it's it's all all new again. So oh, you know, right. Apple may have dropped Apple may have dropped some of these games. Some of these games, the 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 authors may have said, "No, we don't like Apple's deal anymore." Um, you know, we haven't heard. You know, sounds like nobody's disclosing that. That's probably part of the deal that Apple. You know, you can't. Can't talk about uh, Fight Club. Um, yeah, right. This panel is back in the next edition of Mac Voices to finish up our conversation about how Apple is making a great deal of money in gaming without seeming to really try. Then we turn our attention to all those articles out there on the web that are claiming to pick some of the best laptops, but always seem to conveniently ignore the M1 Max. That's next time on Mac Voices, and I hope you'll join us. Until then, and as always, I'm Chuck Joyner. Thanks for watching.